Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about whether or not Hashimoto's is a fatal disease. And spoiler alert, the answer to that question is yes. However, the reality is that most people who end up with Hashimoto's are not going to die as a result of the Hashimoto's disease itself. While it is th theoretically possible to die from Hashimoto's, that's just not going to happen in a developed country. And the reason for that is we have plenty of thyroid medications that are available, and anyone who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis will end up on treatment long before they actually die from the disease. The only way for it to occur is if you had Hashimoto's thyroiditis and over many years your immune system completely destroyed your thyroid gland, you were unable to produce thyroid hormone, and you sat in that state for a long period of time until you ultimately ended up in a coma and ultimately you know, ended up passing away. Um, the reality is we catch that way sooner. We put patients on thyroid medication and that's not the problem. Now, that just because Hashimoto's won't directly lead to um, an increased risk of mortality, hypothyroidism does lead to an increased risk of mortality, and that's what I wanna talk about right now. So we know from twin studies that patients who have low thyroid function, or we'll just abbreviate that as, um, we'll abbreviate that as thyroid function. So low thyroid function have an increased risk of mortality by about 50%. So in other words, if you have low thyroid function compared to the average person who does not, you have about a 50% increased risk of death, and that we call that an increased risk of mortality. Now, that is a little bit different than saying Hashimoto's increases that risk because this risk is associated with hypothyroidism. So the, the reason this is important though is because Hashimoto's leads to hypothyroidism. We know that ultimately what ends up happening for the majority of people is that Hashimoto's damages the thyroid gland, it can't produce thyroid hormone, and you end up hypothyroid. Well, let's add an M there, so it's complete. And so you do end up with that 50% increased risk of mortality, like I said, that's come from studies, uh, from twin studies. So we looked at twins who had Hashimoto or hypothyroidism, those who did not, and we look at their cause of death and their risk. Now, the question is, why does hypothyroidism increase the, the, your risk of mortality? Um, and what can we do, if anything, to prevent that risk? And it turns out that the, the increased risk of mortality from hypothyroidism comes from the comorbidities. So in other words, what happens is, as your thyroid becomes depressed and you're in a hypothyroid state, your risk of developing certain medical conditions increases, and those medical conditions lead to the, the an increased cause of death, and that increases mortality. So is that mortality associated with Hashimoto's? Yes, absolutely, but not directly. It's an indirect, it's an, an indirect association between the relationship between Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. But again, there's gonna be some silver lining here. I'm not trying to freak you out because there's uh, really good news that I will share at the end of this, and basically, you don't have to end up with this increased risk, and we'll talk about that. So what happens between Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism that increases your risk? Well, we know that there is a big increased risk of cancer in patients who have Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. So this is, this is unique to Hashimoto's because the antibodies associated with Hashimoto's increase your risk of certain types of cancers. I've gone over that in other videos before, but it's uterine, breast, and a couple other tissues as well. But we know that those antibodies interfere with the regulation of, and the physiology of the body and increase your risk of cancer. And of course, cancer is not something you want, obviously, so that increases your risk of, of, of death by itself. Then we know that patients who have Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease, of course, means having a heart attack or having coronary artery disease or ending up with a heart attack. And then obviously heart attacks increase your risk. In fact, they're one of the, the leading causes of death among all adults. And same with cancer, by the way. So these are you know top couple causes of death. So the association between Hashimoto's and cardiovascular disease is because hypothyroid states increase cholesterol. Now, if you, and again, we'll talk about the silver lining here, so I'm just going through this information, then we'll kind of come back around to it. And then finally, we know that there's another increase of risk, another comorbidity in the form of obesity. So when you have a low thyroid state, you're at a much higher risk of gaining weight, right? 
And that weight gain is associated with other things, including high blood pressure, so we'll put hypertension here, um, insulin resistance and diabetes. And then also obesity by itself increases your risk of cancer. So it's not the Hashimoto's or the hypo hypothyroidism per se that leads to the increased risk of death. It's all of these consequences associated with the low thyroid state. So you could, I would say that they're indirectly associated, but here is the silver lining. Just because there is an increase in risk doesn't mean that you have to accept that risk. And here's what I mean. This all stems from the decrease in thyroid function or hypothyroidism. But guess what? You can treat that. You can, you can completely maintain normal thyroid function if you are a hypothyroid patient with the use of either natural therapies or thyroid medication if necessary. And in the case of Hashimoto's, as I've described previously, you can, if you catch it early enough, there are, there are ways to reduce the thyroid antibodies, which again would reduce your risk of cancer over here. There's ways to increase thyroid function, which would reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by increasing cholesterol. There are ways to help you lose weight by increasing thyroid function with the use of thyroid medication, et cetera, which will help you lose weight and help you get rid of all of these other um, uh, consequences like hypertension, um, insulin resistance, diabetes, et cetera. So just because this risk exists doesn't mean you have to accept it. And the key is all about optimizing thyroid function. Now you can do that in one of several ways. I would recommend if you are someone taking thyroid medication that you check out this video, which discusses how to optimize your thyroid function by making sure that you're on the right type of thyroid medication and the right dose. And if you do this, you can completely normalize that thyroid function aspect. I also have videos which go over how to reduce thyroid antibodies, which is different. So increasing thyroid function is a little bit different than um, reducing thyroid antibodies and the treatments, even though there is some overlap there, they are different. So if you have Hashimoto's, I would recommend checking out both of those videos or at least one of them next.